G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. So this week I need to try and get some brackets installed in the machinery space and the sail locker. I want to try and get the brackets that will hold the hot water system done and the two uh, poo tanks. Um, so we're going to get started on them. Nice simple job for this week. Well I didn't want to buy a full sheet of 10mm plate, that would have cost me about a thousand bucks. So I got, this is a 10mm bar, uh, 250 by 10 mil and I've got it in a meter length. My plans were cut two um, bits off and that's the right width for the hot water system uh, bracket here. Uh, the hot water system is 410. These are 250 each so when I put them together that's going to make 500. Um, so what I've got to do is clean up where I plasma cut just give it a bit of a grind. Then I've got to put a weld prep all the way down this seam, flip it over, do the same I'm going to weld these two pieces together. It was a lot cheaper just to buy these two pieces than getting a whole section of plate because they don't sell the plate um, in little bits, they only sell it in full sheets. So we'll make do with this. Um, we'll get this set up. I'll we'll drill four holes in the sides because when the hot water system sits on here, uh, for it to meet survey requirements, it has to be fully encased. Um, because it's a pressure vessel and that can explode and go direction so um, we'll, we'll get those four bolts all done and then we'll have to retain the hot water system down to this bracket. All right, so next up, I've got some poo tanks. So the weather is crazy today. It's uh, raining half the time, it's blowing a gale. So I've got the dead cat on the GoPro. So uh, hopefully the wind noise is all right. So I'm loving using this angle iron to basically frame out anything I'm doing on the boat. Just because of that 90 degree corner makes everything rigid. So I can't bend it one way, I can't bend it the other way. Uh, it's not flimsy. Uh, so I'm basically using this angle iron for everything on the boat. Uh, and that's no different to these frames here that I'm going to be using for the poo tanks. So basically we're going to box it in. Um, that's going to retain it, stop it from sliding uh, one way or the other. Uh, it, yeah, it's a good little frame. And then uh, as you can see, we've got these holes, which I'll choose which one I'm going to use. So these little holes here uh, will be the drain and the uh, and the fill for the poo tanks. That's going to cover it. So I'll, we'll end up scalloping out some of these bits here. Um, but yeah, because of the rain, the bad weather, all week it's been like this. Uh, I'm not going to bring the welder out here because um, it won't. It's too hard to pack it up when it starts raining. So it's easy just to run away with a grinder and take the power cord with you. So I'm just going to be doing more prep work and uh, hopefully we can get all this achieved. We're about ready to weld this. We've got a bit of a, a mechanical prep in the weld joint. We're gonna put some good size tacks on either side, one in the middle. I'm going to flip it over because as you weld it it will start to um bend like so that one one end will flex in and it'll be a bit of a concave so when we flip it over uh we'll run the whole weld down the other side and that should reduce the, the bend in that whole plate Can't seem to find my wire brush, so this wheel will work fine. So 
So I won't even really have to uh, grind those welds off, they're going to be nice and flush basically. I really like these angle grinder attachments here with the sanding pad on it. It's got a little plastic backing. You screw onto your angle grinder with a little aluminium retaining ring. Put these pads on, they're about 70 cents each. And they clean up welds really well and um, a lot cheaper than a flapper disc. So the little uh, Scotch Bright 3M flapper disc, they're about five bucks each. They're about 70 cents. Um, and yeah, just rips off the steel and uh, gives you a nice smooth polished finish. You get different grades of uh, sandpaper too if you want to get really fine and polished. It's great for like chewing out wood, fiberglass, everything. Um, it's a really handy little attachment to have for your little angle grinder. These are called tremel bars. You basically use them to mark a radius or a circle. Um, they have these tapered little uh, like scribers on the end so that you can sort of rotate them for fine adjustment. And then you undo one end and you can slide them back and forth. So, I just want to mark out a rough radius on here, or a rough circle, so I can know where to drill my holes. So I know that it's a 410 diameter, so we'll make 210 on here, or 205, sorry. Then I'll describe a radius on here. So I know where to put my holes.
So as it appears, the last four weeks that I've come to the boat, I've got nothing but rain every time I want to start something. Uh, the only day I had that was good, I came down and I whipper snipped all the yards to get the weeds down. Uh, but that had to be done because um, we're on an island here and it's full of snakes and um, we don't want no surprises in the hot weather so I'm keeping that, that grass down. Um, so I've got very little progress here. One cool thing I want to show you is, is what I, I worked on. I'm trying to limit the amount of grinding that I'm doing on camera. So I did this part off camera. Um, this is the rudder. So I have been contemplating making a whole new rudder, um, just getting like measuring it all up and getting it laser cut and I'll just stitch it all together. However, this has been made pretty well. Oh, and it's so heavy. Oh, it's thick steel, it's six mil plate. It's galvanized, which is, you know, I'm gonna be okay with that. Um, it's not connected to the hull um, crazily. Um, so you see these, this was uh, all scalloped out here and the shaft, which is that shaft there was welded in. Um, and it had a lot of welds. The guy was a good, who made this was a really good welder. Um, it's really secure and it's been sitting there for 20 years and you can see there's no corrosion in there surface corrosion on the shaft but none of it's pitted which is what you'd expect uh, so once the corrosion has taken its place or the oxygen had depleted um, then you would uh, then the corrosion would stop and that's what had happened um, there's a little bit of pitting in this plate here but so long as I uh, address that properly cure it and paint it and get it all good um, this rudder should be usable now you can see that that would have pitted out in there because this is galvanized and that's steel so you've got that just similar metals even though they're pretty close on the um, noble scale they are still a bit of an issue I'm going to try and reuse that so when the weather clears up a bit I am going to bring the shaft out here and see how it all fits and we'll get that tacked on once it's tacked on, we'll put it in place, move all my rubbish out of the way and put the rudder in place, see how it looks, and um, maybe we'll be able to save this piece. So here you can see the old rudder shaft. Reason why I decided to make this, it was fine. It's, it's made out of steel. Generally, that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, however, I wasn't too happy with it being a hollow tube. Although that is super thick, it is real thick. Um, well, like 10, 12 mil thick. So that's super strong. Just the type of bearing that I have in there like the lantern ring and, and the bearing, it crushes so much. You got like um, probably 15 uh, cap heads all around the, the lantern ring and the retaining bracket, and it squashes um, two um, like two chamfers together, um, two wedges. And as it squashes, it puts so much pressure on the shaft um, that having a hollow one is not the best idea. So got this solid piece 75 mil um, stainless 316 stainless it's all machined down nicely good welding job got a keyway to suit the flange on there and we're gonna fit that shaft to that rudder hopefully uh, yeah there's dissimilar metals there uh, but if we blast and paint it it should be fine I'm gonna put anodes on the rudder as well um, so that should take care of any of that issue However, you might be able to see that this is too long. So, this is gonna come down. So heavy. All right, so it's a little bit too long. 
All right. There will be a, a pin two bearing on the bottom here, but I might have to cut off an inch. Just that left that left that long enough. Um, just because we don't know um, the final finish height when it was on the lathe anyway. Uh, I didn't know where it would stop, so it's a simple matter of cutting that. It's going to uh, sit on a pin tool bearing anyway, um, so that is fine. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of putting that all together, giving it a bit of a weld. Got to get this height right to match the hole and clear that flange and have enough room to put bolts in and out. Um, so that's cool. One advantage of the way this rudder is designed too is that um, that keyway doesn't have to line up with anything. Uh, we'll, we'll put it uh, forward to aft um, just because it makes sense. However, it doesn't have to line up with anything in the boat. Um, the way it's set up is it could be on any orientation and you just lock it using that lantern ring up in there, which is cool. That's basically a perfect fit. I won't have to do anything to uh, prep that, except for you know, remove all that corrosion before welding. But uh, that turned out really nice. So basically, gonna make sure that that uh, height between here and here is correct. Um, I've got to make sure I'm going to have enough room to get spanners and bolts in and that in and out of there because uh, I've got to be able to remove the rudder and then I'll tack it together we'll sling it up and um, work out the overall length to cut that shaft to much sturdier and happier with this rudder shaft and this one here that would have been hollow so get a scrap metal there now Trying to work smarter, not uh, silly, I guess. Um, it's not exactly harder. It's all raining currently. We've got drips coming around me, but I'm underneath the boat, so I'm keep, I'm keeping dry. So I'm trying to work this, this rudder out. I've put a bolt in here. That bolt is gonna sit basically where it is. And it hits one stop and we can turn it and get lots of clearance. So that's not a bad height. We can move this up 20 mil. So bring that whole flange up about 20 mil and we're still gonna have about 10 mil of clearance all the way around. So we'll probably do that. This end, however, uh, so it gives us 1450 from the bottom to, the, to that uh, where the pin two bearing will go. I've sort of marked that out on there, if you can see that. So pin two bearing sits where that circle is and I want the pin two bearing to slide up onto this diameter here and uh, I want a, at least you know 20 30 mil of um, solid bar inside that pin tool bearing so what I've done is I've measured from top of that flange down now 1450 stops just shy of that it's only going to give us like 10 15 mil inside that pin tool bearing so I'm going to slightly modify the keel we're going to Remove this corner here, giving us another 30 mil of clearance on this shaft. Um, it's not a very big modification. So yeah, we'll we'll move remove basically that section there. And then we'll make a new section to nicely go in just like that is now.
So at this stage, all I've done is knock this corner off. So as you can see, that would have traveled all the way up, creating that little wedge in there. We've now cut that on both sides. That gave us an extra 25 mil approximately. And then we can move this shaft down a little bit. That there goes up a little bit. And I'm going to tack it in this place. Um, I think that's a pretty close condition uh, on where we want it positionally wise. We do have a little bit of work to do down there. And if this doesn't work, what I can do is cut a hole out um, so that this shaft fits through giving that pin tool bearing an extra 15 millimeters of clearance. I don't think we're gonna to need to do that. Um, however, uh, this will have to be cut. Um, and once I get the pin tool bearing made up, um, we'll know the exact size. Uh, but that's pretty good. I'm happy with the position. I'm gonna bring the welder back out and tack that now that it stopped raining. Well, the tacks are on. So we'll uh, have a look at see what that looks like when we go to put it up. We won't be able to put it completely up because this is still too long and it'll foul on that little snubber that comes out the bottom. But it's a good start. We just gotta get wait till we got that pin tool bearing. See where it comes up onto here and then lob off the rest and that's basically not that far from being done and then the next step after we finish that pin tool bearing getting it all installed down there we'll put it on the boat and we'll blast and paint it um it'll be the first time i'll use my slurry blaster i've got my blaster there and i've got an able blasting uh, attachment to turn it into a slurry blaster uh, a bit like the one i used in the first couple of episodes to blast the hull but um it's a lot smaller, not as powerful, but we'll give it a whirl and see how we go. We've got this tapped in it's good i'm happy with the position it's a good enough distance away from the wall uh, to get you the ability to paint that nicely um, i can stand on that so if it takes my weight it's going to take a few 50 kilo water system put the holes all drilled so i'm happy um, so i won't fully weld that up that end and we've got to make a bracket that will support this flex that's we're going to get in that um, so I'm happy that we're going to put the hot water system in here. It's going to come up to approximately this height. Gives us ability to put something over the top. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. I've actually made this with a bit of a slope this way and a bit of a slope this way. So it's going to, if anything um, leaks, it's going to drip onto this plate. And instead of pulling underneath the hot water system and staying there until it dries, um, it, will, it will slowly like run off to this, this corner here and, and drop down the edge. So I could have done it that way, would have straight into the bilge, but what I was thinking is there's water in the bilge, if there's ever water in the bilge. Um, it may be annoying if it drips this way and then actually drips into the water, you're just gonna hear that drip, drip. If it drips off this way, most of the time, there's not gonna be any water in here and you basically won't hear that drip. Uh, so just some little things to uh, consider when I'm trying to make it.
that's those guys installed so we've got the black water box fits in there nicely it's super strong i can jump up and down and that doesn't flex at all i put a full penetration weld all the way around so there's like 30 millimeters or 30 centimeters of weld all the way around and we get to choose whichever one of the 10 outlets that this box has all the way around it's got outlets underneath um, outlets everywhere so we get to choose which in and out we get to pick from um, and it gives us lots of options just choosing this type of poly box i will be installing ratchet straps just to hold that in place but fits nicely looks good um, reason why i'm welding it in there now all these plates because I want to blast these all at the same time. I don't want any surprises. I don't want to be uh, blasting, painting the whole boat and then having to do a little mech, pep, mech preparation um, on the paintwork and weld these in afterwards and then have to make sure all that paint works good. Everything gets painted all at the same time, inspected and made sure it's right. Uh, and all these get blasted and painted at the same time. So this space is getting cramped already. It's going to be big hot water system here grey water tank there um, then we're going to have a RO unit in here and then there's going to be an air conditioner in here it's going to be a big box sitting in here which is going to have all the electrical work uh, it's going to be a waterproof box uh, it's going to have inverters in it um, main motor controllers and all that sort of stuff is going in this sort of electrical cabinet we're going to install in here uh, there'll be a door access in this side um, the stairs are going to lift up so we've got access coming in this way so there's a lot of stuff going on in this small space but uh, the two major brackets are done uh, i've got to wait a couple more months before i get an ro unit which we might fit in sort of this area here um, i'm going to build a little shelf underneath this poo tank um, in case i need if i can't get rid of the poo i want to be able to put a bucket underneath that and manually empty that and wash it out uh, i don't want to rely on having to get a vac in there or having to pump it out because what if i'm staying at a dock for a long time i can't just pump it out at the dock uh, i need to be able to get the poo out so i'm going to put a little shelf under there i can put a bucket open a ball valve drain into the bucket and take it out um, so these two are done all right, so we're here on the settee because I can now. Um, it is actually real comfortable, even with these dodgy cushions. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the progress. We've got two brackets in the machinery space all done. Um, you know, they've got some fine tuning. Everything gets a little bit of fine tuning afterwards just because it's a progress. Um, you don't exactly know if everything's perfect just yet. So you sort of just put it in place, get it as best as you can. Uh, but not fully finish it off just because we've got to place everything in place uh, once we like maneuver all the chest pieces into place and we're like yep that's exactly what we want and then bam you, you weld it all together but happy with that so far um, the poo tank will work well in that position it's very high above the water line so um, I can use the uh, gravity fed system so the, the electric toilet is going to um, flush into that under pressure but then it's not going to leak out um, so it, it'll work well um, there's a couple more things to go in that space before we really uh, work out how much room we've got to officially play with uh, and i've got to get those items too um, otherwise i don't know exactly what sizes they are um, so we've got a bit of electrical work to go in there as well one uh, watertight electrical um, hub in there um, just to keep everything safe, but also I don't want like uh, bits and pieces of electrical being wired up all over the place. I want to run all the wiring to one central location. So if there's any issues, you go there and you can run and trace everything back from that one destination. Um, so there's a lot of work to do. I'm glad I made a start on that rudder. We got rained out so much this week. Uh, it's, we've had more rain this week than we have all winter. Um, so. It was uh, quite disappointing, but uh, the rudders sitting there underneath the boat are uh, all nice and dry, so I thought, why not start on that? Uh, I'm not getting rained on while working underneath the boat. So made a start on that. I didn't plan to, but that's good. We kept progress going. So hopefully next week I'm gonna continue on with the rudder. I'm making bits and pieces for it at the moment. We've got the pin tool bearing getting made up. 
um, and I've got some modifications underneath the keel there that we've still got to do. But we might continue on with that next week um, and see how we go. I'm glad we haven't touched that machinery space yet, so that's a good starting point in that area. Um, so hopefully everyone's enjoyed the episode and uh, let us know what you think and we'll see you next fortnight. Thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.